everyone, and welcome to another episode of Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realm Smith. I am Jason Azevedo, your host for this evening, and we are on episode 39, believe it or not. Um, and we are doing part two of the Falling Star Ship by WizKids. Um, love to see you all in the chat. Tons of people watching. Uh, I know you're all probably stuck at home. So uh, just a huge hello and well wishes and good health and good luck to everyone who's out there. I uh, want to shout out, first of all, our sponsors as usual, Dungeons & Dragons, for having us on their channel and making this happen. To... Uh, Whiz Kids for all of the incredible uh, minis that we paint on a regular basis, um, including this ship. And to Vallejo, of course, for being a paid sponsor of the channel uh, and of the show and for giving us all the incredible paints that we have uh, at the table today. Um, we're very excited to jump in, but I have a bunch of announcements real quick for you guys. Um, Divine uh, Serp says, I'm sadly at work. I know that some of you need to be working. Um, I am currently on um, self-imposed self-isolation. I was traveling to Gamma Trade Show um, last week, the week before last. And uh, as per the government's suggestion, I have self-isolated for 14 days. So I haven't seen my kids in two weeks. I won't see them for another week. Um, it is not fun. And I know a lot of you are dealing with the same sort of thing out there. Um, but uh, this, these moments are just as important, if not even more important now, that we're all kind of isolated and in um, kind of at home and looking for things to do. So again, just want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in tonight and making us your choice for spending your Sunday afternoon with us. Big announcements. Uh, tomorrow night, we are continuing Into the Mist. It is going to be a remote game, which means that all of our players and our cast will be joining us. Wow, it is a mess in here. <laughs> all of our cast and our players will be joining us via uh, the interwebs um, and... Streaming from their homes. Uh, we're going to try and do it that way. Hopefully we don't have any issues um, technically for that. But uh, that is the intended purpose and way that we are going to run tomorrow night's game. That is Into the Mist <coughs> at uh, the usual time of 7 p.m. tomorrow night. And that is our Curse of Strahd campaign on the D&D Twitch and also on the Realmsmith Twitch. Um, we have, uh, if you're, in, if you... Enjoy what you're seeing here. If you follow us on our on the Realm Smith Twitch, this little potion bottle behind me will blink once for purple, blink purple once for a, a follow and twice for a subscription. And we are just so, so so super thankful. Sorry, and blue once for a subscription. And that's just a way of letting you guys know that we know you're here. And I can thank you guys for the um, for the follows and for the subscriptions. But that has to happen on the Realm Smith uh, Twitch uh, at. at uh, yeah. Um, as well, make sure that you guys also follow and subscribe on the D&D &D Twitch as well. Uh, we are live on two different channels. Um, and in order to do that, yeah, do it at Realm Smith. Uh, I want to thank all the moderators. DC Lasser, as usual. I don't know if Jack's not funny's on here. From Dungeons & Dragons, who are incredible moderators. I am in the chat. I have it here in front of you folks. Hello in Manitoba, Ball and Hobo. Yes, we are in Ontario. Um... I, we will, I will be answering questions throughout the entirety of the stream. If you have a question, write question in caps, and then uh, your question. And if I miss it, and if I don't answer it, then just ask it again. Good afternoon, Tam. Good 2828. All right. Um, let me show you guys some exciting stuff. Is that cool? Like I said, I was in Gamma Trade Show. Um, and uh, Airbrusher, holy cow, gifting tears like crazy. That is amazing. Wow. Have we found any issues with internet speed? Some. So we are not live on Facebook tonight because there is some issues. Please tell me, though, guys, if um, that is really great, Airbrusher41. Thank you so much. That is incredible what you, what you just did there. We really appreciate that. Uh, but, yeah, let me know, guys, if there's any slowdowns or anything there. Um, I think it should be fine. But uh, just uh, keep me posted on that. Um, I am going to show you some really fun things that I learned at Gamma Trade Show. The reason I was at Gamma was I was there uh, in Reno, Nevada with 
uh, WizKids and with Vallejo to show off the new WizKids Vallejo paint line, um, which we are super excited about. And I'm going to show you guys uh, kind of an inside look here. Uh, the, the paint line consists of two starter cases. Um, that is the basic starter case. It's got 40 paints in it, pulled from the game color line. Um, the next one is in an intermediate case. Um, which also has 40 paints in it. And so across both of them, uh, it is an 80 paint uh, line, 80 paint paint line, 80 color paint line with um, all pulled from the game color line. So same SKU, same numbers, but they're small little cute little bottles of uh, Vallejo WizKids branded paint. Uh, and basically what, what I did was I helped them to curate the sets what colors should go in both sets, and then also, um, and also designed all the packaging. So myself uh, designed the stickers for that case, as well as the ten sets of technique sets, which will be available. Maybe what I will do real quick is I will show you guys. Uh, a little close-up of this before we get into the rest of everything. So I'll show you all 10 sets real quick. I'll get through them really quickly. You guys can ask more questions about them later. First set is Champions of the Realm, which is basically painting fighters and barbarians. Check out this nifty tutorial by Realmsmith header. So excited about that. That's Champions of the Realm. And then we have uh, Wood and Steel. We have Dungeon Depths. We have sh uh, Shadow Warriors, which is Warlocks and Rogues, and more. Maybe Ninjas, too. Why not? Defenders of the Wild, Rangers and Druids. Masters of the Arcane, Sorcerers and Wizards. Arcane Elements, which is basically all inks and some paints for painting the clear effects on your... Um, unpainted minis woodland creatures for all of those awesome creatures that are in the whiz kids line protectors of virtue which are for paladins and clerics and then finally flesh tones for all of your uh flesh painting needs um these will all come there are eight paints in each they're the smaller bottles and they will come with tutorials inside by myself with links to tutorials by myself as well so we are so stinking excited and happy to have to be partnered with realmsmith on all of this and uh sorry with vallejo and whiskids realmsmith is happy to be partnered with whiskids and vallejo on all of it and we cannot say enough about that whole thing because we are just pumped to be involved and to have uh, had such a hand in bringing all of that to you guys. So we are super, super excited about that. I've already got a question. Will the GaryCon stuff be streamed here by GaryCon? If the latter, will it be behind a paywall? Haha, -ha. here is the information on GaryCon. For those of you that have not been following our socials, hope you're ready to have your minds blown. Our minds were blown, but here it is. Our GaryCon schedule is right here in all of its majesty. Um, because GaryCon couldn't happen in person, it is now happening virtually. On March 28th, Realmsmith is owning the, ch the whole channel, and we're partnering with D&D and GaryCon to bring you some crazy streaming. First off, as mentioned before, 12 p.m. Eastern, which is now uh, an hour later than it was originally, um, is Into the Mist. That is our live finale. Then at 4 p.m. Eastern, we have the Tides of Wildmount prologue. So that is our Wildmount campaign. Um, that will be episode zero uh, of that campaign. And then we are still to announce the 8 p.m. slot. We're just kind of finalizing. Everything is kind of happening last minute. But we are so freaking excited to have a bunch of special guests join the original cast of our shows, including Matt Mercer himself, Matt Lillard, James Hake. Nora Ibrahim and B. Dave Walters will all be joining us on that day uh, remotely, and I cannot tell you how stinking excited we are about that lineup, right? It's nuts. So we are so stinking pumped. Uh, stay tuned for that. Get your bits fingers ready, as I said, for our Into the Mist finale, because you as players at home can join the militia and actually affect the gameplay on the table using bits. 
is it is not behind a paywall. Somebody just asked. Um, it is going to be absolutely free. It will be on the Gary Khan Twitch, on the D&D Twitch, and on the Realmsmith Twitch. Mind blown. Um, as well, the Friday night, there will be a cyberpunk game um, DM'd by Mike Pondsmith himself with a bunch of other celebrities, too. We'll be announcing that soon. That will be happening this Friday. Uh, and on Sunday, I will be doing the regular Nozer's time and the regular time slot. Uh, we will be painting the Young Red Dragon, which we were supposed to do live at Gary Con for you folks. And I'm so sad that I can't see you all there. Uh, but hopefully, we'll see you at Origins if it hasn't already been canceled or isn't canceled in the near future. I think that is all the announcements. Um, we have a, a ship to pay. Oh, no, it's not the announcements. I forgot to show you guys this again. So we showed you this week, last week, at Gamma. They also released a bunch of uh, scenery tufts. So the, uh, Vallejo has gotten into the scenery tuft business. Um, they've got extra large ones like that. And then they got funky colors like blue. And they've got standard smaller ones like this color. Look at this, like tur turquoise blue color. They've got pinks. They have reds. Very excited about all that. And that will be, these will be available end of April. And the paint line stuff will be available uh, early summer. I don't think what's going on has affected it too much. But they're shooting, I think, for an early summer release on all of that. And, of course, as usual, um, Sirenscape kind of giving us a little bit of mood stuff so that we can feel good and feel like we're out on the ocean on the Wave Chaser which I can say now. This ship will be featured in our Tides of Wildmount campaign, including our prologue on Saturday. All I can tell you is all of those wonderful cast members will be pirates among or uh, aboard the Wave Chaser, which, again, mind-blown, along with some of our regular cast. Okay, uh, let's jump in, folks, and uh, we'll take it from there. We've got uh, Tools of the Trade, the Falling Star Ship Miniature by WizKids. Of course, you'll need that for this. Uh, Vallejo brushes. Uh, We've got a bunch of them. Zero, one, and a two. A Vallejo dry brush. Some water for washing your paints, dilating your paints, of course. Paper towel for dry brushing and cleaning. And then a paint palette for mixing paints and holding them in general. We don't have a lot of colors. Slightly different than episode one because we've moved kind of past a lot of it. Heavy Sienna, Parasite Brown for the dark wood paneling. Uh, then we have a heavy brown that we used last time with a pale yellow for highlights on the light wood paneling. Bone white sepia wash for the ropes and such. Black wash for the metal and the dark uh, wood. Then we have some gunmetal and chainmail silver for all the metal parts, of course. And then heavy green and jade green for kind of a cool effect that we're going to do on the hull closer to where the water should be. All right, folks. Hope you guys are ready. I'm going to show you what progress I made. I said I was going to make a little bit of progress during the week, and I did. This ship is actually taking a lot longer than I thought it would. As I guess most of my projects do. I just smoked it with my head, uh, with my hat. Um... So this is what the staircase area looks like when it is all base coated. This is just flat. Uh, this does have a wash on it, but this does not. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like and how to put a wash on all of this tonight. That is the first step kind of that we're going to do. This is what it looks like when it is finished. This is with a wash and just a single layer of dry brush on all of it. And you can see how wonderful the detail really comes out in that. I posted a picture on Instagram and in the Tabletop Crafters Guild, it's got like 600 likes. So everybody really loved how that came out and how that looks. So that is the staircases, which we're just gonna put up here for now. Um, then I also base coated the mast. So that is what one of the masts looks like without any washes. We'll add some of that here and I'll show you how to do all the rope and everything that we're gonna do. And then this is what it looks like with the mast with the uh, black wash on it. Um, and so we're gonna get into that as well. This is cool. So as you folks uh, might know, the uh, Falling Star ship uh, has these kind of cardboard uh, floors. So one of them has a grid, the other one is gridless. I like the grid, so we'll put that in later. But so you all can see, I went ahead and base coated the entire hull 
and then I dry brushed it with that Parasite Brown we were talking about, but that's more or less what it'll look like in the end. I also dry brushed the banister area. Um, this has just been given a wash, so I'm still gonna dry brush that with some chainmail silver. I went with the metal color because the pre-painted version I have is all kind of gold um, accents and I want it to be a little different than that. So when they're on the table together. And then the back, I did heavy brown with a sepia wash and a dry brush of pale yellow. And that has really kind of popped and I like the way that that looks quite a bit. Uh, all right, so that is that. Um, what we're going to do first, like I said, we're going to do the stairs and let that dry because that's a big, t there's lots of wash that we're going to do on that. And then we will go from there and maybe we'll get back onto the, onto the actual ship itself. I'm just going to put it aside for now. Patron asked, give, give us an example of how to spend bits to attack. Um, <laughs> that is the question, isn't it? Uh, I cannot tell you exactly how that's going to work yet, Patron, because it is a bit of a surprise and it'll ruin kind of the, the story. I also, sorry, I also base, uh, base coated a lot of the, uh, masts and, um, and we'll deal with those later. Let's put those over here for now. Okay. Um, I can't tell you exactly how to spend bits to attack. All I know is, all you need to know is that there will be a moment where I will ask you in the game to use those bits to attack. And then at that point, something will happen and it will affect the actual things that are happening on the table. I can't tell you exactly, but I will tell you every hundred bits is an attack. That's what I can tell you for sure. But it's going to be unreal and so fun and frankly we lost a lot of money on on gary con uh we love those guys we were platinum sponsors so we're so happy to still be involved but this will help us to recoup some of that money um that we uh lost on the show uh shade star says how much time have you spent painting since last week's episode just trying to gauge the total time it takes an expert to paint so i can multiply by five for amateurs like me i've probably spent at least another two hours at least two, three, maybe even four hours since last one painting. There's a lot. Uh, Bun Bun already gave. Uh, is that, did you just give an attack? <laughs> Not yet. This is for the finale, Bun Bun. Just wait. Thank you for the bits. I think you just sent us, but <laughs> there's an attack. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate bits anytime, but uh, the attacking happens next, next week on Saturday. Okay. So uh, that's funny. All right. Uh, so that is the existing one. We are going to move on to this one. First thing we're going to do is we are going to use um, let's use our black wash. We're going to take some black wash. I went through a lot of black and a lot of CPU wash folks on this ship. So again, another way to do this if you don't want to spend too much money on washes is to spray paint it black and then just dry brush on top. It's not going to have the same effect but it will be effective still, um, and it still will look great. I decided to do it the old-fashioned way to show you folks that it's possible. This would have been faster, too, if I had maybe taped it off and then dry brushed certain points or spray painted the whole thing brown to start and then went. There's lots of ways around it, but I just wanted to take the long way around so that, uh, for example, yeah, Bun Bun says thank you. Yeah. Exactly, that's the way it is. An example of it, uh, Bun Bun just did on our on our channel. Use a brown spray paint primer. Exactly, uh, Wild Antic. We could have absolutely used um, uh, some some of the Vallejo uh, spray primer, uh, colored spray primers that they have. There's a brown that would have been awesome. But again, I wanted to show you folks how to do it the old-fashioned way, just so um, you everyone there who doesn't have. Um, an airbrush or whatever could also understand how to get it done. All right, so I am just going ahead with my black wash and I am applying it to all the dark areas. All the areas that I base coated with heavy sienna. I'm also getting all of these um, kind of metal braces at the bottom of these, uh, of these legs, I should say, I guess, on the, or these posts. And with the wash here, I'm not going too heavy on it. Uh, I'm, you know, making sure it is on there, but it will kind of run um, onto other areas. You don't necessarily want that to happen, folks. And it's also dripping a bit too. So just make sure that, uh, I already did wash on the back. 
Just make sure that you don't, you don't have to wet it too much also. This wash can go on pretty, pretty much full strength. I'm gonna get the legs. I'm trying not to get it on the lighter brown. If it does, it's not a huge deal, but I'm absolutely trying not to get it on that part because that will get a sepia wash. And the black does show through quite a bit, so you wanna be careful of that. And then if it gets on the high, heavy brown areas, um, like the lighter wood, all I do is brush it off. Just take my brush, brush it off, it comes off, and then we're good. So that is how that dark wash looks on there. And that should be pretty good for now. I'm gonna put that down just for a sec. And I'm gonna go ahead and add, again, what we wanna try and do is ba batch paint. I already have black wash out. I don't wanna waste the rest of my black wash. So I'm just gonna lay that down for a second and I'm gonna go ahead and add some black wash to the other areas of the miniature that need a black wash so that they can dry as well. I really should have more um, paper towel down so that um, I can dry more things, but I think it's okay. We'll make it work. Now, again, I have base coated all of it just to kind of get ahead. Um, if I was doing this on my own, I would have base coated all the, I would have base coated all of the uh, heavy sienna, so the dark wood brown areas first, then put the wash, then added the, added the heavy brown so that I'm not getting the black wash on the heavy brown, but Again, I'm trying to save a little bit of time here, move a little quicker, so, and just get it ready so that we can do as much as possible on the show. So you folks kind of understand my process a bit, but there we go. Black wash. Now this is a really big brush for this. I'm probably gonna switch to a smaller brush to get into the smaller areas. But for right now, this is working. Uh, we also want to get it onto the um, metal areas as well. If we, were if we were using like a gold color, I would use glorious gold for the base, and then I would use a sepia wash on top of that. And then I would use uh, polished gold to finish that off. So that's the difference between if we wanted kind of golden accents instead of these, instead of these uh, kind of metal steel accents. Again, I wanted steel mostly because I wanted it to be different than the other ship that I have that's already the pre-painted version of the Falling Star ship. And again, why I, the reason I called it the Wave Chaser is because the ship that is being featured in our campaign is called the Wave Chaser. And that is what I am doing with the ship. Okay, here we go. I'm trying to be kind of careful with it again. I don't want it to go onto the ropes. If it does, I just wipe it with my finger. It does, it's not gonna look horrible, but you will be no, able to notice it. We are gonna go around and highlight all the ropes first before we put the wash on. We're gonna use bone white for that, to do that. But for right now, let's just make sure that all the wood and metal is given a wash. And you can see how that's already starting to do what we want it to do. These big platforms, these big brushes are good for these platforms. And we're just doing the metal and the wood all together. It's actually faster to do that, to base coat all the, area, the similar areas that are gonna get a wash, and then just do it all together. And then I'm just gonna do this and wipe it off the, off the light brown. Flip it. Question. Um, are you doing the Curse of Strahd campaign tomorrow or Wildbound? Tomorrow is Curse of Strahd, Patron. Uh, Curse of Strahd is still going to go until we have tomorrow's session. We have a Saturday session of, of the Curse of Strahd uh, into the Mist campaign. And then we also have the following Monday. We're also doing uh, Curse of Strahd. Uh, and that will be, we're getting making up for yesterday, uh, for last week's episode, which we just did a Q&A for those of you that were watching. Um, and so we'll have, we'll have lots of Curse of Strahd left before we go into Wildmount.
Um, I lost you folks here for some reason. My computer just decided to do a software update. So I can't answer questions until it's back. It's so strange. Just like literally out of nowhere, just restarted into a software update. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. So I can't currently see if you guys are asking questions. So just hold on to your questions until until I'm done. Um, until it's done. And then we can answer those. So weird. It usually asks you. I don't know why it didn't ask me. Anyways. Okay. Almost done. Just going to do this mast here. may take a little while with this update so we'll see that's why sirenscape died too this is the computer that runs all of that stuff so just really random i apologize folks because we're asking some really great questions okay so i'm now going to switch over Make sure I wash this brush. I'm gonna switch over to a larger or smaller brush than I was using for in between here to add this wash. Um, because that other one was too big to get between these ropes here. I said, hopefully this update doesn't take too long. I can try and get on Twitch on my mobile here, but uh, I won't be able to see both both streams. So let's just give it a little bit of time. Okay. This is the joy of, of live streams, folks. Technology just sometimes decides to do things. Okay. There we go. And there. Okay. I'm going to turn it around to the other side. Like so. And I'm just wiping off the, that black wash off of certain areas. It's not a huge deal because we are going to dry brush and use a wash on the ropes. But um, I just don't want it to be there as much as possible. Okay. We'll just wipe that off. There. So that is the mast has been black wash. The black wash is already dry. It's pretty warm in here, so and dry in here. So the black wash is already dry on the bottom. By the time I got up to the top, I am literally just going to throw this onto the deck of the ship where it magnetizes to dry, and then um, and then move right along here. Let's see what next. So we've got uh, all those masts. I'm not going to do these. I'll, I'll finish these up later. I don't want to take the time to do more black wash. I think you guys have got that um, under control and under cover. This one is now dry, almost. doesn't have to be dry before the next step, but it's getting there. Um, it is pooling in a couple areas, so I'm just going to pull it up a little bit and just kind of make sure that it's not going to really pull up in any corners. That's good. All right, um, a little sepia wash here now. Actually, this is what I'm going to do first. First thing I'm going to do is do the ropes. So I can do all the sepia washing all at the same time. Uh, I'm going to add a little bone weight here to the palette. I'm going to get my little dry brush. So in here, I'll load my brush, wipe it off, and then basically what I'm going to do is it's a dry brush slash overbrush. And what I mean by overbrush is that it's basically just a, mo a wet, wetter dry brush. What I'm going to do is on these ropes, I'm just going to do this. Basically run the side of the brush 
along the rope against the 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 um against the detail so against the grain which means basically running it like this not along because i don't want to get it into the recesses but you can see how that looks really nice uh it's too bright now obviously so the the, the intention is obviously then we add a, a sepia wash to it and it's going to look like this really cool aged rope which will also separate it from the light wood areas so we're just going to do that on all the ropes i actually really enjoy this part it's a lot of fun Sometimes you do have to go with the grain. Just be careful with it when you do. It is saying it's going to take 43 minutes to restart. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on to um, onto my mobile here. Folks, if you want to ask questions, unfortunately, I'll only be able to take questions. Um... Unfortunately, I'll only be able to take questions on one channel, so um, maybe DC Lasser will keep an eye out on the the D and D channel, and I will monitor the Realmsmith here for questions. So, like I said, if you have if you have questions, folks, oh, I'm getting volume here. That's not good. I don't want volume. I don't want to hear myself talk. There you go. Um. Okay. All right, we're back into the questions. You folks have questions. You can list them there. I will keep an eye out on that as you have questions. I just said, hey, everyone. No, nope, I can't. Hopefully, I can see the chat. If you guys uh, on the Realmsmith Twitch just want to say hello just to make sure that I can see what's going on. And make sure that it is that I'm getting chat here. That would be good. Not seeing anything yet. I'm not sure why I'm not allowed to chat on here. Hopefully it works. Oh, now it's saying only half an hour, so it usually goes a lot faster than it says. So hopefully it won't take as long as it's stating it will. I'm so stinking excited for the GaryCon streams. A bit of a dream coming true to play with some of those folks, so I'm really pumped. As you can see, I am doing a bit of an over, a, more of an overbrush. Like I said, it's a, it's more of a, a wet dry brush, and it's just catching a lot more of that detail easier. Um, basically, just not wiping as much as I would, wiping as much off as I would um, for a dry brush. I'm also, try not to catch other areas because you don't want to do that. You don't want to catch the mast, which I am in some spots. <laughs> but I'm trying not to, or the platforms, for example. Looks a little messy now, but it'll look really nice when we add that wash. There we go. Question. You've probably been asked this, but how long have you been painting minis and what got you started? Divine Serp says. Um, that's a great question. I have been painting minis since I was about 13 years old. Uh, and, uh, the first couple of minis I painted were D&D &D minis, actually. They were, um, old school, or old school pewter minis, um, that, uh, got me into painting. Ralpartha minis, the old, old, old ones. Um, I was about 13 or 14, I guess, at that point, maybe 12 or 13, uh, playing D&D with my buddies, and I painted my character, and I painted an orc. Were kind of the two minis I painted at that time. Um, and then took a long break from painting minis, and um, then really got into it again, like really got into it. I did it, for, you know, here and there throughout the years after that, but really got into it um, when uh, Games Workshop released the... Um, 
the Lord of the Rings miniature line. Uh, and I, I, I just fell in love with the movies and everything. So I just decided I wanted to paint minis. I didn't really play the game much, but I just loved painting the minis. And then got it really into a wargaming, playing Warhammer and so on, painted lots of there. And then when I got back into D&D about five years ago, um, I, I discovered all of the painting opportunities and then really got into it. And then the rest is, the rest is kind of history, as they say. Hopefully that answered your question there, Divine Serp. Okay. Okay. Now, again, the hope is that even though this is, these look these ropes look bright, they're they're going to dull down a little bit and look a little aged when I add that wash, but I don't want them to look too aged. I'm a little concerned that they're going to look a little too aged, then I have to do another dry brush, but we'll see, or another overbrush. But we'll just have to see when I get there and how it kind of all, all works and looks. Because I do want them to look different than the platform color which is also a base of heavy brown, but using a different highlight color is going to really help with that. For the ropes, I'm using bone white. For the, um, the, wood pan, uh, the wood platforms and such, or for the light wood areas, I should say, I'll be using pale yellow, which is going to give it hopefully a different, different feel. We're almost there on the update. That's good. I'll be back with everyone soon. Question, can you use a homemade black wash like the one from Black Magic Craft? Of course you can. You can absolutely use. I mean, I use the Vallejo one because it's readily available and ready to go and all of that stuff. But absolutely, you can just use any acrylic black wash, add water to it um, in certain amounts, and, and go from there. Um, the black wash that Jeremy does from Black Magic Craft... Um, is uh, a little different because he uses it for crafting and for um, and for stabilizing or strengthening foam, and so he mixes a Mod Podge with a black paint to create this black wash that basically is a is a primer as well for for the materials that he uses for for crafting. Uh, very cool. You can check that out. He's got a great channel. That's Black Magic Craft on YouTube. G good guy, too. And a Canadian to boot. So you check out his stuff. Black Magic Craft. He's one of the... He's one of the guys that... Um, that got me started. so weird all of a sudden it went to another video and i thought that maybe my stream died and i got all worried it didn't right we're all still here yeah we're all still here so strange uh, scary for a second. I'm a little worried about internet bandwidth, especially for the games next weekend. Because we have really great service here, great bandwidth. Never had an issue, but with everybody kind of at home now, internet's a bit wonky. So, all right. I'm also getting the little rope that uh, kind of intertwines on all these little nubs here. I don't know all the technical jargon for the ships just yet, but I am learning for Wildmount. But 
all this rigging here. I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm basically just touching it with that bone white color just to lighten it a bit before I give it a wash. Like that. Okay, so that's all the rope on there. Um, I should probably do the other mass that is now dry. Um, can you see me? I can see you, Patron. Hello. <laughs> 13 minutes left on on this uh, on this update. So I'll be back with everyone again in about 13 minutes, hopefully. I see you, Patron. Hopefully you can hear me. Hello, Keniji, Kenija, Kenija. Welcome, everyone. Hopefully, everyone is healthy and staying at home. I know things are different in all parts of the world, but go just trying to get through all of this rope and rigging so that I can move on to some of the other stuff Hi, Jason. Do you have any suggestions on how to paint a brick tavern wall when 3D printing a ton of terrain? <laughs> um, a brick tavern wall. So uh, I've done some terrain stuff, um, some tutorials, but basically dry brushing on any of that stuff is your best friend. Um, you ab absolutely want to make sure that you are dry brushing uh, your tavern wall. It really depends on what color brick you want to do. Please, uh, if you can give me kind of a some information on what uh, effect or what result you're looking to get, because um, there are so many different colors of brick and types of stone and all that kind of stuff. Then maybe I can give you a bit more, um, a bit more of a, of a of a helpful tip. But for me, um, I think it's quite quite important to dry brush as much as you can. And find a good way to base coat, uh, whether it be with spray or something like that. If you're doing a ton of terrain, that really helps. Uh, I did a ton of Dwarven Forge painting. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, it really helped to have, you know, bulk paint, either spray or uh, whatever, to be able to paint it all really, really quickly. Um, larger brushes help as well, especially when you're doing a large surface area. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Okay, I think we're back, folks. Let's see here. It was like everything kind of went. Oh dear, that is a uh, part of Twitch that we don't want to listen to. And uh, all of my volume muting has undone. Okay, so I am back on the D&D &D Twitch. Woo! And I will be back on the Realmsmith Twitch in just one minute here. Sorry, folks. Just give me a sec. Perfect. I am back. In business. <laughs> DC Lassare says, woo! And y'all, y'all are still here. Nobody went anywhere. Love that. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. 
Okay. Again, if you have a question, write question in big uh, caps. So, um, make sure that you let us know that you are here. Uh, and also, if you enjoy what you're watching, uh, be sure to uh, follow uh, the D&D &D Twitch channel as well as the Realmsmith channel. And if you follow the Realmsmith channel, uh, you will light up this little potion bottle to my left, just over my shoulder here. It will blink purple once for a follow, and once it'll, it'll uh, f blink once blue for a subscription. So thanks, y'all. For doing that. How much painting is everybody getting done in this time, eh? If you're home, you're out of work, maybe you're working from home, but in the evenings can't really go out anywhere. Are you guys making a dent into your unpainted minis? Korg28 says, uh, what is the best varnish to use on a metallic paint? I've painted all the metallic dragons, but I'm afraid to varnish them. I don't really know what to use on them. If you use a, gla a gloss varnish, that'll just do fine. Or satin will, will be good as well. Depends on how shiny you want it to be. Um, but either one of those will do. Don't use a matte because that will, a matte varnish because that will dull it quite a bit. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I would say. Either a satin or a gloss varnish will do. General Kilroy says building a dice tray and slide lid box for dice for a friend i love that love i we, before we got uh, elderwood academy dice trays for our for our stream i built some dice trays just from kind of a wooden f uh, a wooden painting canvas basically uh which was just all solid wood that i got from uh from the dollar store put some felt in it it's a lot of fun actually i didn't do a video on it i should have at the time but Love a good dice tray. So many fun collectible items in our in our game for D and I just love the idea, the fact that there's just so much that's readily available for people to kind of get their hands on and have fun with. All kinds of wonderful people making really fun, awesome things. Okay. Almost done with the rigging here. Um, I am going to, I don't think I'm going to do the lacrosse mast, the arms basically on the masts, just yet. Um, I think I'm going to wait on those uh, and do those in my downtime before the season starts, just because of time today. What time is it? It's almost six o'clock. So I just want to make sure that I. Again, um, I like to represent all of the steps that I can so that you folks can go ahead and paint your own ship. Even if you have just, you know, just the techniques at least down. Not that I'm necessarily completing the whole, the whole uh, miniature, but. Okay. The black wash isn't too dry in some of these kind of deeper recesses, so we just want to be careful because it's starting to mix a little bit with the bone white, and it's going to look a little kind of soupy and, and gross, so just be careful with that when you're doing yours at home.
Hey, Mel. Melanie from our Into the Mist campaign is online. Welcome her. She plays Callie, as most of you who watch the stream know. She also has very good taste in men. Well, now. <laughs> Hi. Kyburn says, hope you're doing well in your self-quarantine, Jason. Thank you. It has been a bit rough. Ain't gonna lie. Pretty lonely. I'm a people person. I love to be around people. That is how I um, recharge my batteries. And so it's hard, especially my kids and Mel. And it's just hard to not... It's just hard to not be able to see anybody or frankly to be able to uh, play our game is has been really rough because that is something I absolutely look forward to every week and to not have the folks here the realm smith cast here on Monday nights has been has been tough to say the least for me it's a highlight of my week and that has unfortunately been taken but Hopefully, we'll be back soon or then later. God, who knows how long this thing is going to last. So we make the best of it, right? My self-isolation ends on, on Friday, just in time for our game on Saturday. We have not decided whether or not we will play in the same room or not. Probably not, um, depending on what everybody's saying, but we'll see. All right. Here we go. I am done on the ropes. Next will be uh, the washes. So now um, for the sepia wash, we're going to go ahead and add that to all the ropes and all of the light wood areas. This really, I really liked the way that this kind of worked out. I'm very happy with it. I'm going to use a bit of a larger brush just to get through this a little quicker. Um, Actually, you know what? That is too large. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just throw this on this banister real quick just to use the wash that's already on the brush and then just wash that off. And you can use this, this um, technique for any wood, really, that you do. It doesn't necessarily just have to be this ship, of course. Um, but you can see, as I add this wash, how it kind of ages this rope Gives it this really kind of warm color to it and finishes it off really nicely. It'll just seep into the recesses and do its work, which is exactly what I was looking for. Haha. -ha. And when that dries, it's going to look really nice. Remember, folks, when you add washes, which are intended to add um, depth and shadow to your miniatures, just remember that they do dry matte. So I'm probably going to have to go back and brighten some of the metal up with uh, chainmail silver afterwards. But you can see how that's starting to look. I am watering the, the sepia wash down a little bit. The, um, the Vallejo washes tend to go on a little thicker uh, and, and uh, more opaque. Not opaque, but but just stronger than some other washes. I like that because you can always thin a wash. You can't always thicken it. So uh, I like that because then I can thin it to the, to the consistency I want, but you can see just how that's coming together. I dig it. I dig it a lot. Just a touch of water. It's a little too little. And then we're just going to, yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to add that across the entirety of the, the mast. Hey, man, 25-year year DM from the old days. I want to get back into painting mini and stuff. Any suggestions on where to get the paints and miniatures I need? 
Great question. That's from Gray Pilgrim 007. Um, so the Whiskids and Vallejo, if you, if you go back and watch the VOD version of this episode or last week's, um, I showed off uh, kits that WizKids, which makes the miniatures, and Vallejo, which makes the paints, have teamed up together to bring a paint line to go with the WizKids unpainted minis. Um, this, what I'm painting here, is an unpainted mini, as well as a lot of the stuff that we use on our, our show. An example is this uh, druid that I painted a couple episodes ago from WizKids. Um, but where you can find all of that stuff is find a local game store that carries um, RPG or gaming, uh, tabletop gaming supplies or items, and they will help you to find exactly what you're looking for um, that way. Uh, WizKids has a great line of unpainted and painted miniatures that you can use for your D&D game. Uh, that's what we use a lot of, so you can check that out. Vallejo is also, uh, other than in the kits that are coming out in the summer, they're also available separately, um, and we have a lot of tutorials on our channel to show you how to paint a lot of those. So if you're just getting started and you want some help, um, Realm Smith can, can kind of help you with a lot of that. So check that out. Hey, Bruno. How's it going, buddy? Tavern Dog is here, and he still has the cone of shame, folks. Um, I'm in self-isolation, so it's very difficult to get out and take him to the vet. Oh, Bruno. So we're just kind of... we're. Kind of waiting out his eye situation to see if it that's not that's not annoying at all. He's basically what he's doing is he's trying to scratch his his neck with the cone of shame on. And it's not really working out for him as well as I think that he intended it to. Hey Bruno. Not working out so great, hey bud. Poor guy. I'm just so thankful that he's here though. So that I have some so I'm not totally, completely alone. Okay. Adding some sepia here, right across the miniature. Uh, thanks, WizKids, huh? What are the dungeon dressings made of nowadays? Um, lots of different things. Uh, WizKids has a bunch of dungeon dressings that are, uh, that are available. Um, some of the you can you can get 3D printed stuff. You can get Dwarven Forge. I mean, there's tons and tons of stuff. But Whiskits has just come out with a really great uh, a dungeon set, affordable dungeon tile set, which I think is going to be available soon, if not already. Bruno, buddy, um, and that will be made available really uh, really soon by Whiskits. You can check that out as well. WizKids is a, is a sponsor, obviously, of this show and of our stream. You can see a lot of the stuff that we use, actually, um, on our Into the Mist campaign. It's a Chris of Strahd campaign you can check out on YouTube, um, on the Realmsmith YouTube, or on the D&D &D YouTube as well. Uh, and, and you can see all the miniatures and stuff that we use there, and that maybe will help you kind of take a look and see what you like and see what you want to use. Dwarven Forge is also a sponsor of the stream. Okay, so it it has subdued it quite a bit, but I do like that it looks a bit more aged. I like that. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go back and highlight it again. I might, but I don't. I haven't. Dis I'll, I'll decide later. I think, um, but I do want it to be a little lighter. I am talking about the warlock tiles. Yes, Refin. Uh, I do have a set a set of those, and we have used them in the uh, stream already. Oh, I can't just put that down. I have to add the wash to all of the wood areas. I'm just going to go ahead now and add the wash to all the lighter wood areas. That is the plot. The, I've used it basically, and I've decided where those areas are. Uh, for me, it's the platforms, um, the edges of the platform. So I've left the middle kind of the dark brown. I just wanted to make it more a bit more interesting. Uh, and and some add some kind of creative delineation here uh, from the dark colors. So there it is. You can just hear Bruno like scrounging around in the studio with his 
with his cone because his cone just scratches against everything. Poor guy. It's got to be so annoying. I do keep it off most times, but when I can't, when I can't monitor him, like during shows, I got to put it on so he doesn't scratch his eyes. So he'll scratch his eye out. Just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions. Remember, folks, if you ask a question, make sure you write question beforehand so I can catch it really quick in the chat. As the chat goes by uh, kind of quickly, and if I'm painting a little bit, then, then I won't be able to catch it um, if you don't write question ahead of your question. So just make sure, folks, that you are doing that. And if I don't a ask, answer a question, just make sure that, you know, a little later in the stream or, you know, if you notice that maybe I've missed it or if it's passed and I haven't answered it, just ask it again and I'll, I'll, I'll try and get to it if I see it. Okay. Really like how this sepia wash is affecting this heavy brown color to make this wood look really cool. Looks kind of worn and uh, deep, and like heavily varnished as a ship kind of would be to become kind of waterproof. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Like I said, sepia is my favorite wash in the whole Vallejo line. I use it for so many different things. Um, and light wood like this is, is absolutely one of them also use it for like leather um, you can use it for bone you could use it for uh, like scrolls or purity seals which are common in another game that I used to play all right okay bottom half Again, just adding all of this sepia wash to the edge of this platform. And I haven't even dry brushed the platform just yet. I want to get all the washes down before we do that, but then we're going to dry brush it with another color as well. So, okay, that is all of that. That one is all the washes are done, but you can see how it's subtle, but the platform looks really cool. I guess it's a crow's nest, but it's not like a nest. So. I don't know if it's still called a crow's nest when it doesn't look like a nest. Uh, question, is there rigging or sails with the ship? Yes, there is. Um, I don't have them in this room currently, unfortunately. I had to take the sails off the cross beams um, in order to... Actually, you know what? I'll go grab them. Let me just go grab the sails to show you folks kind of how they look. And how they work. Give me one quick second and I will grab some for you. Okay, so this is how the sails look. This is the pre-painted mast, so from the pre-painted version of the Falling Starship. And it comes with these really cool kind of like canvas sails. That is the pre-painted mast, and this is the progress on our mast. It's a little different, but still very, very cool. And then we're going to, um, and then this is the mast I took off of my ship and it took some doing but I, I basically had to take these beams and slide them out one kind of loop at a time and then they'll slide right back on after I'm done. Hello Jack's not funny glad you're here. Mm. 
B. Fisher says, question, what is the best site to purchase the upcoming Vallejo paints? Um, best way to do it would be to, um, thank you Oso for gifting some subs. That's amazing. Um, best site, uh, Vallejo, uh, so I would go to your local game store is the best place to buy those kits. 100%. I don't know where they'll be available online. Maybe Amazon, but, uh, you know, especially after what's going on in the world, folks, uh, if you have a local game store near you, uh, please support them. They're feeling it uh, really bad right now um, because all, a lot of their business uh, d depends on people coming into their stores. And right now, that's not happening. So just uh, make sure, folks, that you give them some love after this whole thing is over and we're on the other side of it. But yeah, local game stores is where I'm going to say to check out those those kits when they come out. Okay. Yeah, and if you guys want to play D&D &D and your group has had to kind of like take a, a hiatus um, like ours kind of has uh, right now, look at um, the... Uh, DC Lasserre and uh, Jackson Funny were, were, were posting about Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds, their online D&D &D, uh, applications where you can play from the privacy of your home and on the D&D &D website, which uh, they just posted in the D&D &D chat. Um, there are lots of re uh, materials, PDFs and so on, that tell you basically where you can play or how to find people to play and, and, and games to play and so on. So there are still ways to have fun and play D&D, &D, even though you can't be in the same room as each other. Um, I prefer being in the same room. That's how I love playing D&D. &D, but given the current times, I can still get my D&D &D fix, which I will next Saturday with Matt Mercer and <laughs> Matthew Lillard and B. Dave and Nora and James Hake. I am so stinking honored guys the reason i started to do this was because of critical role and uh the reason i started to live stream our games was because i was i loved their show so much it was so fun and so entertaining and i love D, D so much and i thought you know what we can do this too and there were times where obviously i felt maybe we can't do this this is pretty hard and trying to get an audience and technical issues and bandwidth and internet and cameras and lights and man it was just it's been a long kind of couple years but um the fact and this is true talk kind of heartfelt stuff um the fact that i get to dm matt mercer in his own world uh <laughs> is uh is something else let me tell you i'm not sure exactly how to process that just yet um <laughs> But uh, that is exactly what's going to be happening next Saturday. And um, he's super pumped about it. And I'm just so thankful to him for taking the time to play for Gary Khan. Uh, and for, you know, there's a lot of people who missed out and, and lost money on that on that show. So we're doing our best to still bring it to everybody uh, remotely. And, uh, and just thankful that those guys are all joining us remote like that it's just such a huge huge thing so thank you to all of our guests like i said i wasn't kidding when my bum when my mind is blown right now so crazy Can you cross post the Roll20 info on the Realmsmith Twitch? Uh, DC Lacerre, if you're there, if you could just uh, post, if you haven't already, uh, post that stuff on the Realmsmith Twitch if you have a sec. I know you were in there a little earlier, bud. Um, if you wouldn't mind, just, I can't right now, but that'd be great. Thanks, bud. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to do all of the ropes. 
as I did on the other one. Just real quick here. Uh, General Kilroy says, uh, is it homebrew? You're asking. Uh, oh, I see. You guys are talking about Roll20 and stuff. Cool. You know, the silver lining for Realmsmith and all of this, even though, you know, we don't get to get to the cons and, and all of that stuff, is that, you know, we still are able to bring shows like this in isolation to all of you guys out there while you're at home. So... That is the silver lining for me, um, as difficult as it is, and what we're going through really sucks. Uh, at least we can do our best to keep you folks entertained and kind of bring you a little hobby to your to your home. So, and you guys can watch us play, even if you can't play. And I mean, there's it's just yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to be able to do that for the community during this time. Okay, hey. getting close here. I do like that the rope does look lo does look brighter than the lighter wood, which is what I was going for, was what I was hoping for, um, with the kind of bone white overbrush that I did. So that's positive. It's all about the little things in life, folks. <laughs> it's all about the little things right now. And I just, I can't say it enough, and I say it every stream, but just make sure that you guys, you folks are looking out for those that are feeling it the most um, and are, you know, in the most danger, the seniors, your neighbors, your older neighbors, just make sure that they're okay. Keep an eye out for them, an ear out for them, because it's those people who, you know, are older and are in the most danger that really need our help right now, so... question did you do in-person campaigning did you do in-person campaigning general Kil kilroy i'm trying to understand uh the question uh if you could just clarify what you mean by that um we are are into the miss game uh, and our upcoming wild mount game will be in person uh we usually have a group at our table you can check out into the mist at uh twitch.tv slash realmsmith which you're on right now <laughs> and uh or uh, the DD twitch as well um, and we do have a home game that we live stream, and that is our Curse of Strahd campaign. And then we also have a Wild Mount game, not also, but we have a Wild Mount game coming up that will be in the same uh, time slot that will go for th two, three to four months, which is Wild Mount based on the new uh, Matt Mercer Critical Role world, um, which we will be running for the next three or four months, and then we'll be back to uh, Curse of Strahd again just in time for the fall and coincidentally for Halloween, which made a lot of sense for us. Um, okay, that is that one is now out of the wash. I'm going to just toss that onto the ship. And now we have this thing. So this one's going to take a little while to add that wash to. Um, but... Uh, do we do that or do we finish up the masts? No, let's do this. It's fine. So again, this is going to take a lot of wash. Uh, the hardest thing of this whole project is all of the kind of banister slats, rods, poles, whatever you want to call them. I used to know what those were called. Um... Those are, I'm going to call them posts for now, those are the hardest to paint because they have so many sides, and um, so it's not easy. But if you have a big brush like this, it's a little easier to get in between there and just make sure that you get your wash 
into the recesses and around the whole thing. Make sure you get it under the banister as well. Hey, Tiki Games. All right. See? And this is just, you can see right when you add that wash how that detail comes out in that wood. It's just so cool. I love it so much. Just like that, that one side of the banister is done. Then careful too, because when you do this, just wash tends to fly everywhere because you're basically flicking it along the inside of these posts and it just loves to travel. So careful what you're painting over. This, the DM station at my, the, the desk I built it, or that sorry, not the desk, the table that I built for our D&D game is already full of, of paint. So if you don't want paint on your surfaces, remember that when you're doing stuff like this with lots of texture, it is going to end up everywhere. And then we're just going to do this, the top of the stairs, and then we'll turn it around, do the bottom. Just getting, just want to make sure you get the wash in all the nooks and crannies, and then it will settle on its own once it's kind of in there, and it'll seep kind of to the edges and into the recesses. Sometimes you got to kind of tease it into the re recesses to start, but once it's in there, it will kind of gather. You don't want it to pool too much, but you definitely want it to gather in those recesses. That's the point, is it adds shadow and depth to the miniatures. Okay. There we go. That is kind of one side done. Make sure you get the underside. Did not get the underside of this. There we go. Need some more sepia wash. Hello, amazing job so far. Looks great. My question uh, from Soxy Boy is, have you used or heard of anyone using Zoom for playing D&D &D for groups who can't meet in person? What are your thoughts? I've never used Zoom. I have heard of people using Zoom to play D&D, &D, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, I know Zoom wouldn't have the built-in kind of interface for, for playing like Fantasy Grounds or Roll20 does, but I've heard people using Zoom before, maybe other people in the chat can answer that as well. Um, I don't have any personal um, experience with it, so I've used Google Hang Hangouts before. Uh, I'm assuming Zoom kind of is the same thing. Um, if you just want to use kind of paper and, and dice, but if you want something that's a bit more advanced with um, kind of map capabilities or um, graphics and, and, and markers and tokens and stuff, then that is and you'd probably be happier with something like Fantasy Grounds or Rule 20. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to do the door separate because the door has uh, those those metal bands on it. Uh, I think they're actually supposed to be wooden bands. I looked at the pre-painted one. There is, oh, wait, I think these are made of wood. But I like the way the metal looks, so it's fine. I don't regret it. Um, but um, 
and I have to do a black wash on the metal bands and then this sepia wash on the, uh, on the rest of the door. And then we'll go back and we'll do some highlighting on one of the masts and then we'll probably do the bottom of the ship. And that's probably all we have time for. I don't think I'm going to do a third episode on the Falling Star, but I will post images of the finished ship afterwards for your reference to see how kind of the, the, the end result looked. But we're, by the time today's done, we would have covered all of the different techniques that you guys will need to paint it the way that I have. Uh, and then also, folks, as always... Make sure that when you when you paint stuff and you use our, our tutorials, we love to see how you guys paint your things. And so be sure that when you post them on socials that you tag Realm Smith and Vallejo and WizKids and D&D &D, um, because we all love to see the um, the, the end result of, of your, your creations. So please, that brings so much joy to my heart uh, when I see that people have used our tutorials and they've enjoyed them and it's helped them along and that is my favorite part of what we do here at Realmsmith so please do that because we love to see it okay uh, that is that wash I think I'm done yep um, on those parts basically I'm done on all of the light metal, uh, sorry, light wood that I can do with this large brush. I'm going to basically wipe that brush off, go back in now, and with this door, I'm going to add it to the door carefully, trying not to get it as much as I can on, or trying to get as little as I can on the actual metal parts, unlike the last door I did, which is, I got out quite a bit on it. <laughs> um, on the other side of the stairs. Do the whole kind of frame as well. And what I'm gonna do, folks, is before I actually assemble this ship, uh, I am gonna spray it with a varnish first. I have a matte varnish that I'm gonna be using from Vallejo. Um, and I do that because I don't want, uh, I, I, I don't wanna scratch the paint off of it as I'm assembling it. Um, that's important for me because this is going to get a lot of wear. I'm going to move all the pieces around a lot, and I don't want to lose the paint job that I spent all this time doing on it. I don't want that to go to waste and start to chip, and then you have to fix it, and it's just not fun. At that point, it's just not fun. Okay, almost done. There we go. Okay, so oh, wash has been done on all the light parts. It is seeping onto the metal there, so I'm just going to wipe that a bit. And then I am just quickly going to use some black wash for the metal on the door. Real quick, like, just so that can all dry and be ready to go. I'm going to paint it like that onto the hinges, onto the handle, trying not to get on the rest of the door. There we go. And in doing this, I'm also wiping off some of the sepia wash that has gotten onto the metal areas of the door as well. There it is. Okay. Putting that down. Taking a breather. Oh, yeah. My back is good. Okay. Any more questions here? Is that a full boat kit or is a piece kit? Uh, it's a full boat kit. Uh, it comes with the entirety of the boat. comes with all the floors. comes with two masts. All the, um, all the sails that you need. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Uh, 
Jason, just want Tam Good says, I just wanted to thank you all because watching y'all play has really helped me role play better. Plus, y'all are so funny and I love the voices. Thank you, Tam Good. Appreciate that. It, makes, it means a lot. Holy cow, that boat's huge. It is huge. <laughs> that is true. Does not come with cannons, but you can buy cannons separate from WizKids. Okay. Um, I am not going to do anything more on this ban on this one banister uh, because you folks have pretty much seen, um, like I said, you've seen the techniques. Uh, I'm just moving around some of this wash so it doesn't pull too much and kill the detail at all. Um, and here you can see that sometimes it pools and it will actually clog detail. So I just go around it and, and move some of that. Those, that, But you can see this is the way it looks in the end um, with the techniques that I'm going to show you on the mast part. Um, but that is just with a wash on it, and that is highlighted afterwards. So moving to here, I'm going to show you how to do highlights on all of the textures on this mast. And that is one of the kind of the last things that we'll do today, I think. Um, based on the time that we have remaining. Let me turn my paper towel around. It is a commodity right now, as everybody knows. All right. Toilet paper was the commodity, but you can't get that, so it's down to paper towel, and nobody wants to use that. All right. First things first, I am going to put Parasite Brown. That is a regular um, Vallejo game color color. I am going to grab my larger brush. It's actually quite wet, so I'm just going to dry it a bit here. Um, oh, cool. DC Lacerre uses Zoom. Right on. <laughs> Stonefly guy says, haha, use every inch of those paper towels. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'll get yelled at for sure in the chat if I'm not, if I'm, if I've got bad dry brushing technique or whatever <laughs> right so uh, I am using parasite brown I'm gonna dry brush for those of you that are new to dry brushing paper towel load your brush wipe most of it off until almost nothing comes off anymore and then we're gonna use that and go against the grain on the wood and you can see it is depositing the light color to the upper most areas of the detail and it's gonna lighten it nicely and give me kind of the wood texture that I'm looking for it brings out the texture actually and that is what it'll look like Ooh, that is dry brushing, folks. The nice thing is, is that it even gets like, it'll get darker, closer to the rope. Really neat, right? Love dry brushing. This, this is one of those techniques. Oh, Bruno's back, folks. Uh, I'll use this brush for the, lar for the larger areas, and then uh, I will come back with a smaller brush in some of the smaller smaller areas but there we go I want to be careful not to get this though on the ropes which is why I'm going to use a smaller one because you can even see here that I started to get it on the rope and it's starting to darken it too much I don't want that so For all of you that don't know, Stonefly Kai is a very talented painter with a really great Instagram channel and podcast and all that stuff. Uh, that is the that is my permission, uh, Kai, to go ahead and post links to all that in the chat if you'd like. She's in the uh, Realm Smith in the Realm Smith chat. But look at that, folks! That's some good looking wood there. I'll leave that alone. All right. Sometimes, Jason, sometimes. Okay. Um, all right. Here we go. Moving right along. But yeah, really bringing out the color of the wood texture here with that dry brush. And then we're going to do the same thing to the light wood with... Um, pale yellow. Oh, 
Oh, you're so welcome, Kai. Real Master says, or Realm Master says, Into the Mist is a great season. I binge watched to get caught up. Well, thank you very much. We're very, very happy. We have a great cast. Um, you know, we've worked a lot over the years on our production, and I think we've finally gotten to the point where we're proud of it. Um, and, uh, and it means a lot that you guys watch it. So thank you for everyone for watching. I'm excited for tomorrow night's episode. If you haven't caught up, folks, you can do that on our YouTube VOD. I don't know if you'll be able to by tomorrow, but but uh, that is, if you wanted to get caught up, that would be the way to do it. Okay, so you can see the wood texture now on this mast really come through. Uh, I'm going to just switch to my smaller dry brush and do the same thing in the kind of smaller areas in the tighter areas, I should say, of the ship here, just so they don't look super dark without that highlight there. There we go. Yep. Now this area in here is a little bit more difficult because that is wood, but then there is also metal this is why if I had done this kind of on my own time, I would have done the metal after the fact, um, after I did all the dry brushing. So just a, a note of caution, if you are doing this on your own, sometimes it helps to do all of the dark color of the brown and then dry brush, or sorry, wash and dry brush that and then come back, do the lighter one, same thing, and then come back and do the metal. That's how, that's how I would have done it if I wasn't kind of trying to show you folks everything at once. Uh, I think there is a couple more spots up here. Oh, I forgot to do the platforms. Oops. Um. I'm also trying to get Kai to paint with us at a uh, at a show coming up. So if Origins is still happening then perhaps that will be the time. Okay, uh, back to the larger brush, load it, wipe it off. Question, how do you paint battle damage? And for battle damage, I mean scratches. Um, so, Kinjia 1902001. Um, sorry, folks, I'm just using that Parasite Brown on this, on this platform here, just dry brushing it. It's cool because it looks like it's kind of like the light's hitting kind of in the middle, darker around the edges. It's exactly what I want. Um, this platform, not so much, but just a little light area with some darkness around it. I think that it looks super good. Also going to do the bottom. Um, how do you paint that battle damage? What I do is I, uh, especially when I used to do kind of wargaming and stuff, what I do is I'll do a, or, or armor, do a dark scratch, so a dark color, like a dark brown or a black, and then do the, a light highlight along the bottom of that scratch uh, with a lighter color of the metal or whatever, and that will make it look like a gouge. That's how I typically do battle damage. The other way, too, is to stipple it with a sponge or with a brush with dots, basically, and then, as well, um, highlight under it to look like gouges out of that material. That's how... That's how I've done it in the past, and it's worked well for me. Okay, uh, that is the dark brown color done on this mast. I'm going to go ahead and wash this brush. Kai says, I'm into paint if Origins happens. Sick. Uh, how do you paint battle... Uh, cool all right um 
for the lighter color, we're going to use pale yellow. And at first, I thought to myself, is pale yellow the right color for this? Actually, I wanted to use bone white, but then it looked kind of like just washed out. It didn't give me quite the, the look that I wanted. Um, and so I switched it up and went to um, pale yellow because it, it made it a bit brighter and a bit more warm for me than um, the bone white did. So that worked for me, uh, but you folks can use what you, what you wish. But you can see, I'm just gonna do this. The, the um, brush is a little too wet still, but there we go. And that's just gonna really lighten up, bring out the, it brings out the wood grain. And instead of like a white color, it's gonna give it some, some life, some added life, uh, instead of kind of a, a white or bone white off-white color. I really like what that does, so we're going to use that instead, like that. Again, I'm going to use it again on this platform here, along the edges. Make sure you catch the top edge so that that highlight comes in. Look at that, right? Boom. Bottom edge. Did I just say boom? <laughs> Cabin fever is real, y'all. Figure that out. Last night, had a nap, because what else do you do in self-isolation? And I, I woke up and I was like, whoa, I am not okay. There we go. But look at that. Look at the difference that makes. Really makes it all pop. It's going to look really nice on the deck of the ship. Okay, so that's that. And then... Fading Hedges says, that looks great. Thank you, Fading Hedges. It's so simple. These, these uh, techniques I'm using, for folks, are so simple, so very, very simple, and they really come out and look nice in the end. You can see that that kind of matches that now, too. Um, what is your preferred method of painting large blocks of color? With a large brush, <laughs> one of the biggest uh, things that I find is that it is way easier to paint um, with a large brush or it's quicker and better to learn how to paint with larger brushes and then move down only when you need to. Uh, you save a lot of time because people want to use the smallest brush possible. They think for minis they need to use a zero to get in there every time and that is not the case, folks. Um, use a bigger brush until you are forced to use a smaller brush for smaller details. This is Chainmail Silver. I am using four of the metal areas. I'm gonna load my little dry brush, wipe most of it off as usual, and then I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna highlight all of these metal areas. So same as what I was doing with the other stuff, I'm just going across, lightly brushing it on, and it's just picking up the highest detail of some of those areas. I'm gonna do that on these plates and all of these kind of bands that are around the, I don't even know, the unpainted version, these are all um, just kind of wood colored. Um, I don't think it makes sense that they're metal, but I think it looks better that they're metal uh, just because it adds a little bit of um, textured um, differentiation for the mast. And I think that that's important. So I've decided to go ahead and make it metal, even though, make it metal, even though I don't know if it should be. Um, I am definitely going to highlight this part here. Like that. And then I am going to be very careful and highlight kind of the metal spots in between here, all these little metal plates that exist. I'm being very careful. It is putting like silver kind of flex because you get glitter off, off the silver color when you dry brush but that's okay but folks I am gonna call that mast done I think it looks all right I think it's gonna look really nice in the ship next to all of the other things uh, actually the only thing I'm gonna do is there are pretty big nails or like bolts in the side of this I've got some chainmail silver here uh, on my palette so I might as well just go ahead and pick some of them out 
uh, here. I'm just going to do this. Maybe go around. And just the larger ones. There's a lot of nails in this boat, in this ship. So if I were to, if I were to pick out all of the metal, that would take me forever. Um, oh, sorry, all of the, the, the kind of the bolts or the screw, the nails. But I'm just going to do it in the areas that matter the most and you can see them the most so literally I'm just dotting these in those areas not being very careful I just want to kind of highlight to let it look like there are metal bolts bolts in there like that and it'll just give the idea that there are some other kind of metal textures in this thing as well and do it in the on the other platform too. But these are kind of like the bigger spikes. I wouldn't do anything smaller than this, I don't think. But these are some of the bigger ones. So, And this is what will set the painted version apart from the unpainted one. The unpainted one is great, but this one will have a lot more kind of intricate painted details. Well, it should anyways. Okay, so that's, that's the mast. Okay, so we're gonna put that down. Um, uh, what time is it? 6.41, I think I'm gonna grab the ship. Now, take the, both these masts up, and I'm just gonna show you here the difference between the final highlighted mast and just the one with the wash on it. You can see the difference pretty clearly um, and how much that dry brushing really does. And then I'll show you the unpainted mast and the difference there. So you can see kind of what we've added to that as opposed to the pre-painted one. Cool. Put that mast there. Bring the ship, which is huge, over. Okay, so like I said, I have dry brushed this whole side. This thing is huge. And it's a little shiny. You can see that that's from the wash. As soon as I spray paint it with the, uh, or uh, finish it with the uh, matte varnish, that'll go away. But you can see how some of those awesome highlights look with that Parasite Brown on that side. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Here. Um, real quick. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, let's do that real quick because we have 15 minutes left here. too much see if I do that it's got to be I'm running out of dry paper towel here um, but it's got to be really subtle folks you don't want um, you don't want streak marks you don't want the brush to be too wet either because it'll just it won't look like a dry brush it'll just look like it was kind of brushed on you don't want that Definitely just want it on the surface. Going against the grain. You saw I went with the grain there for just a second, but that's okay. We're going against the grain here, all the way around to the back. You know what, given the time, I'm actually gonna shift this around, turn it the other way onto the area that I've already done. Um, and then we're gonna do the other effect that we have that we wanna do, which is green to jade green. Now, what I'm trying to do here is a uh, question. So you're using a brush on varnish for this project, right? No, I'm gonna spray it actually, Lego. I'm gonna use the uh, Vallejo spray varnish in the rattle can in order to make that happen. Um, so I'm going to use heavy green, which is an extra opaque paint from Vallejo. And, um, I need to grab some new paper towel 
One moment, guys. Because this is going to take a lot of dry brushing. Whoa. Smoked the camera, too. That was good. I'm okay. <laughs> All right. Jeez. Uh, isolation has my brain not working. Isolation. All right. Okay, so heavy green. Here we go. Um, what I'm going to do, what I want to do, and I may ruin this ship doing this, but it's always nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? So basically what I'm trying to do is I am trying to um, make it look like the reflection of the water on the bottom of the ship, as well as maybe some algae buildup. So I'm going to load my brush here with some heavy green, and I'm just going to subtly... dry brush it on the bottom kind of just bottom inch or so inch and a half of the ship like that and this should look like there's a little algae buildup again it's been in the water a long time um do that right across even on the little even on the uh on the ladder there that's it real subtle real light so that when it's on the table, it looks like there's a little bit of green on there. I'm going to go a little bit further up the ship here. Oh, white some on there. That's not good. That's not good. If you do something like that, folks, you can just grab a wet brush and wipe it off. There we go. Okay. Um, again, I'm just dry brushing here. Just getting it on here real loose, like right around to the back. And again, I'm looking, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm not even on camera. I'm making it look uh, like the reflected water and potentially some algae buildup. I don't even know if this would, would happen necessarily on the ocean. Um, I looked at kind of reference of pirate ships and stuff, didn't see a lot, uh, but um, I just figured, you know what, I think it'll look cool, so I'm just going to do it. So that's, that's that. So basically, that is kind of so far the look that I'm going for. Now... Once I've done that, and I think that already looks pretty cool, I'm going to grab some, grab some jade green, and that is just a game color uh, green color. It's got a little bit of blue. It's kind of close to a turquoise, but not quite. And again, this is the Lucidian Ocean that we're playing in, so it's going to be an ocean, not a lake or anything like that. So this is a lighter kind of sea color. I'm just going to be really careful. And see what happens. I'm just knocking everything down with this ship. So huge. Okay. That kind of lighter color green, closer to the bottom, all along the bottom of this ship. Again, you have to make sure that it's really dry, dry brush, so that you're not... And then the hope is, when you guys are watching the... When you guys are watching the stream and we have it kind of on our and we kind of have it on our our ocean kind of table base that it'll look like it's being it's taking some of the color of the ocean onto it i may even do some blue here uh, some subtle maybe even some turquoise color but i think that looks cool very neat I'm also going to uh, do it on the bottom of the metal, I think. I think I want to do it kind of along the edge of the, the, the metal statue here. I'm not going to do the darker green. I'm just going to do the lighter one. But look at that. So now it looks like the ocean is reflecting onto the metal of the, of the, uh, the statue here. Just right on the edge. Remember bottom edge because it would catch 
it would catch on the bottom edge of this. Just like that. And then on the bottom edge of this as well, with the mast. And I'm basically gonna go around the whole miniature and anything that kind of faces the ocean floor, I'm gonna do that. And then maybe even, even some lighter highlights later. I love how that looks there. That really works. And I think it's just gonna add a little bit more interest to this mini than would typically it would typically be um, just from kind of leaving it browns or wood colors. And that's kind of the last of the technique that I wanted to show you guys. Hello, Bruno. There we go. Look at that. So yeah, so that is what it's going to look like. I think that that will add a little bit of interest to the table. If you guys can see that from here. Uh, it's such a big ship, it's hard to show all in frame. Um, but uh, I'm going to continue this offline. And then I will. you guys will see it on the table. Um, let me just show you real quick how it's going to look if I add the the base kind of deck and then I'm going to add my little stairs here. I don't want to push them in totally because I don't want to wipe off all the paint before I get a chance to finish it, but kind of like that. Look at that. Very cool, right? And then our finished mast. coming along, right? And then we, uh, let's go to the wide shot so I can show you folks how kind of that looks. So that's the idea. You've got that, I don't know if you can see it, but got that kind of ocean color coming up the side. I think it's gonna be really neat when we see it on, um, when we see it on the stream on our ocean table. It's pretty subtle, but it, I think it adds a lot. All right, well, that's it for episode 39, folks. Can't believe next Sunday, which is my birthday. I'm so excited. Uh, it's our my birthday stream and our 40th episode, and I'm turning 41. So strange uh, and quite meta. Oh, we have one more question from Fading Hedges. Uh, Hi, Jason. Is there a good starter kit that you recommend to get into painting? I'd be starting from zero, eyeballing the Vallejo starter kit, but not sure what brushes. Yes. So yes, Vallejo, um, the starting kit that exists is great. If you want to wait until the summer, this is what you want. It comes with 40 paints from Vallejo. Um, it's going to be very affordable and it's got, uh, half bottles. So it's not so much paint, but it's great for basic. It's going to have some tutorial stuff in it. That is the first of two cases that Vallejo is partnering with WizKids to, um, to release, as well as 10 of these technique sets that exist, uh, which we help to curate. So thank you so much. We will see you guys tomorrow night uh, for Into the Mist episode uh, 11. Hopefully uh, the technology is good to us uh, because I'm a little afraid about internet and stuff, but, and all of us calling in and how all that works. We had some technical issues last sun, last uh, Monday, but hopefully this time it's fine. Uh, and cause we don't want to go another week without bringing you guys Chris of Strahd and we're getting so close. So thank you so much guys. Have a wonderful night. We will see you tomorrow night. Remember Gary Khan, be there from 9am on, sorry, What's the timing again? From 12 p.m. Eastern on uh, the Saturday, the 28th, until like 11 p.m. Eastern on uh, on the same day, 
It's going to be crazy. Tons of gaming, tons of great guests, and we are so freaking happy to be uh, hosting it on our channel, on the Gary Con, and on the D&D Twitch. We'll all be there. Uh, make sure also that, yes, thank you, DC Lister. We have a, a Realmsmith Discord server, which you can check out as well. The link is in the um, in the D&D chat. Uh, we had, I think, a record viewership tonight for this show, guys. So thank you so much for making us your self uh, social distancing channel of choice uh, this evening. And you guys have a wonderful night. Be safe. Wash your freaking hands. And let's get through this thing together quickly so we can get back to life as we knew it. Uh, and all be uh, very kind to each other. Okay, guys? See you tomorrow night. Bye!